Yo, this is Necrobutcher. And I found that in the, you know, the chest of the collection. Will it be the other? We were camping in the Tennessee, the Milky Way Galaxy, punk rock type attitude. We're just going to try to, you know, gross you out with our music. You know, if you love it enough, whatever you're doing, whether it's your instrument, music, or everything like that, you'll find a way to make it work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could do this all night. Nice. Right? <laughs> yeah. Bass players, I use. Yo, this is Drew from Noise social media bringing you some of the most impressive and innovative extreme metal musicians on air to have an in-depth conversation about things you haven't known until now we like to mention our sponsors and friends bishop martin of rat punch and begrudgingly benny brandon specializes in stippling and digitally designing one-of-a-kind gruesome creatures that will look fantastic on any type of band artwork tattoo just about anything your twisted mind can think of. All of the art on this podcast is created by him, and we can guarantee 100% professionalism for a fair price. If you want to support the pod, please be sure to sign up for one of our $1, 3 or $5 Patreon tiers. We offer exclusive content, updates, merch, and unique offers that you can't get anywhere else. We're hoping in the future this fund can help aid in various subscriptions needed to keep this platform alive, while delivering the best quality content we can. Our mission is to support more bands and deliver more content to our listeners. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate it. Patreon.com slash Noise Dosage Media. What emotion do you think is the hardest to capture in music? Which emotion is the hardest to capture in music? Um, Yeah. Yeah. Man, I think... Obviously, for me, uh, personally, I think it would be, I don't think uh, any particular emotion is hard for me to capture, but uh, just because I've been playing for so long and writing music for such a long time, that it's mm-hmm. uh, sort of a natural just extension of myself by now, where right. I don't even have to think about it. Like, if I'm feeling a certain way or I want to convey something specific, I'm just able to sort of riff around and figure it out quite pretty quickly. And that's one thing where I've just started not recently, but I've been getting into writing um, okay. like prose and that's like extremely difficult because I'm just not used to it. And so if I'm trying to convey something in my writing, everything's difficult for me to try to right, right, get across right. because I, I'm just not familiar with the medium. But as far as like guitar, I mean, I've been playing instruments uh, pretty much all my life. Um, I got a piano when I was very young, probably pre-grade school. So I've just always been like screwing around on on different instruments. And so, yeah, now it's like, oh, I want I want this to be a bit, you know, angry or 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 hateful. I can just pretty much channel that right away and then it's just a matter of um exactly how i want it to sound but like as far as conveying the actual emotion i don't i don't think i have any problem with with any emotion right on that is a uh, perfect answer you know so you were talking about the the lyrical aspect and right that comes to mind is uh i was talking to unrequited Uh, i probably said the name wrong but uh he said that he's friends with you correct billy yeah yeah. yeah, so so he uh he's like well, you know like his vocals they're they're more of like screams in a way, like not really lyrics, but he I don't know, man. He's like one of the nicest dudes I've ever met. And uh yeah. off of that Yeah, he's super cool. Off of that, I just want to ask like how did you uh you know, become friends with him? Um I want to say, and I mean, this is so long ago, I'm probably not going to tell it exactly accurate, but this is how I remember it. <laughs> right, right. Um, I saw him on some kind of, it was either like a Facebook group that shared like atmospheric black metal or it was uh, through Bandcamp and yeah. we just started talking um, probably through the band, the Ghost Bath Facebook page, like messaging mm-hmm. and from there I just like added him and we started talking cause I liked, uh, his first album. Um, the one with yeah, like yeah. that waterfall disrepair. Yeah. Yeah. And oh my so God, it's so good. 
Yeah. And I was, I was like trying to help him out. Cause I was a, at that point in time, I was a little bit further along with ghost bath than he was with his project. And I was just, you know, I'd give him advice and stuff. And then he actually like came out on the road with us and, uh, sold oh, no merch, shit. sold merch for us in the U S and Canada. That was a lot of fun. So that's awesome. Dude. Yeah. He's like never... sitting on his laptop, like making music <laughs> in, in between shows in the band van and stuff. He's, uh, he grinds so much, man. Like, it's crazy when, like, he says to me, he's like, I'm a one man band and this is what I do for my life. And I'm like, this guy is like legit, you know, like he, he goes all in and like, oh, just to be that motivated as one person is amazing. Yeah. I feel like I'm, I'm the same way. Like, I think me and him get along cause we're, we, we just love to be like busy doing stuff and Right, I know right. he has he has so many different projects. I think he's gotten really good with um the way he records. Like he self records everything. Yeah, so yeah, he's yeah. just getting better and better at like the technical aspects of it. And it's cool to see like how his different projects have like grown and stuff. I could just imagine Stars Wept to the Sea was freaking like phenomenal. Like try like five years from now. Yeah. But, yeah, I um, helped him uh he did cassettes for that one. I like did the layouts and helped him do that. Nice. I actually have that cassette. So yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So on the topic of you, you know, like in, in general, uh, what are some key elements that you need in a song? Like what needs to be incorporated for you to be satisfied? Um, are you talking as a fan or when I'm writing my own? So no, 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 just writing your own music. Um, for me, it's never like, uh, it wouldn't be like a checklist or anything like that. Right, um, right. most of the music I write at least. Okay. So this new album is just completely different in a lot of, in a lot of ways. Um, both how we wrote it and, um, everyone's contributing to it instead of it just being me writing all the stuff. So everything up until now that you've heard from ghost bath, I, I sort of do it all in like one session. And for two reasons, one, <laughs> um, I just, I feel like when I'm in that mindset and I'm like writing the music, it all just flows so well together and I can just, make a single statement with it and I just like feed off of it and like put it all out there in just one session. And if I go back, right. It's like like cohesive probably too, you know? Yeah. And like going back to try to edit it or change stuff or like, Oh, I don't like this. I don't like that. I I just felt at least at the time that um, it was just making it worse. And it was just, it wasn't as genuine and like honest to that one moment of when I like wrote the song originally. Right, um, right. I mean, I don't, yeah, like I don't aim for, oh, I need like this many blast beats or this right, right. kind of vocals. I mean, I just, I just let it flow and I just try to do it as naturally as, as possible. Like I said, just doing it so long, I just, you get, you get kind of a feel for, um, what sounds good or what you like personally. And you can just, uh, go off of that, um, with this yeah. new one we all contributed and it was just a mishmash of like everyone's ideas put together. And we, we wrote, we had like jammed together in the same room, but we also, because of the pandemic and the, uh, the riots, they all live in, um, Minneapolis, like right where all the protests and everything. Were oh happening God. Too. Dude, <laughs> so I re- there's I re- a lot of shit going on. I was near Rochester when all that started happening. Oh, and like okay. I would go on Facebook just to, I don't know why I was on there, but you know, I'd watch like live streams of like fucking armored trucks downtown, like, like tanks. Yep. yep. And I'm like, what is this world coming to? You know, I, like, I remember when we were in, uh, we were in the middle of like still writing the record and, um, our practice space was like a block away from like burning buildings. <laughs> so I was like, Oh no. <laughs> and, uh, our guitarist is like, driving right by there and is live streaming to me like through facebook messenger just showing me like all the fire and stuff oh my god wow yeah i wasn't that i was like 30 minutes away from the riot near me but i could just imagine 
you know, if I had like a studio, <laughs> like right down the street, yeah, that'd be tough. All right. So you said, you know, the new, the new album is, uh, it's going to be a lot different. And, you know, with this process of the pandemic, do you think it's going to overall change your writing process? Not, not, you know, I know you're collaborating, but just your methods or just, um, yeah. I think, well, um, I mean, I've lived eight hours away drive from the rest of the band the entire time the band's been around. Oh, and wow. so that's a dedication. So, yeah. <laughs> that's so a lot of dedication. In order to like write or communicate, it's it's basically been like it's like the same as it would for a pandemic <laughs> because um I would only drive down there to practice like before a tour, like a couple weeks I'd go down, we'd do like three, four day session of practice and then I drive back sort of thing. Um, Shit. For writing, it was just sending, sending files back and forth. And then a lot of the stuff we made sure, even if we were just like strictly sending it, you know, over Google drive or whatever that we would jam each song in person because there's like a certain, yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Energy like you can get. Yeah. You can't you can't there's some songs like you just can't play live. It just doesn't translate well. Even if there's like no no shows happening, like you just have to assume in the future, obviously they're gonna happen again. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> we fucking hope so. I um, yeah, I do. I shit. But all right, so I noticed that you were wearing an Emperor T-shirt on some random picture I saw on the internet. Um, sure. You know, I I got the I got <laughs> it, I got into them like about a month ago, believe it or not. I'm a huge black metal fan. I'm just curious within that realm, what have you been listening to? Like, uh, yeah, then black like just black metal in general. Yeah, like the true, the true black metal. <laughs> oh, you mean okay? So more like strictly just cult black metal type stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think my favorite from that like era and that like specific genre is um, Dark Throne for sure. Oh wow! Um, I really okay. like and <laughs> I really like Transylvanian Hunger, which is like a weird pick for some people but for some reason i think that album just has like the perfect atmosphere like if i want something just if i want just like something that's pure like black to me and like grim and just cold i just that's the album i put on i just listen that's to it. it through yeah what about uh dark funeral are you a fan of them yeah they're not bad um i remember my friend showed me that uh what's it called? My funeral, that music video. I thought that was pretty cool. They're in that like abandoned yeah, house yeah, yeah. or something. They, yeah. they can't, yeah. th- that yeah, drummer cool. is insane. That, exa- that's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> Their drummer is crazy. It's just straight freaking not. I don't, I can't see my feet moving that fast in the whole lifetime. Yeah. I, I have no idea. I don't play. I mean, I can play like basic beats, but I, there's no way I can play metal drums at all. I just program them. <laughs> hey man, that's all you need nowadays. Like, that's all you need. I've been I've been doing that recently with the pandemic, and it's just so easy, so fucking easy. Like, yeah, yeah. I think the whole. I mean, I never used to be into the whole pre production. I used to just do it old school, you know, jam with friends. Mm-hmm. But you know, with this time off and just learning the tools and all these gadgets and plugins and drums and all this crap it's like insane man like you can have a record sounding great for like four hundred dollars in in plugins hey i'll do i'll do you better than that um (laughs) with uh the first ghost bath record um well the ep and funeral i just had a one hundred dollar guitar it's a douglas i think right i don't know it's like a okay. shitty guitar i had like a 50 dollar one spot interface plug-in and then i i like illegally downloaded uh <laughs> guitar rig four and easy drummer 
No shit. And then I used a demo version of FL Studio where you can't... Oh, yeah, this is another element of why I did it in one session. So when I first started, the okay. the easy, the uh, FL Studio demo doesn't allow you to save projects and come back to Oh, them. yeah, that sucked back you in the day. You can just export it one time. And so I wrote those albums and Moon Lover just in one session like that and just Dude. exported it because I only had the demo. <laughs> So you're telling me that that record could have been gone with one error in the computer? Um, not the, so I did it one song at a time. So yeah, oh, okay. I mean, one I thought you said like you did the whole fucking thing at once. I'm like, no oh no, way. my computer would die if I did the whole record in one session. I was like, uh, if it was a laptop, no, maybe a maybe like a fucking tank computer, but you have a decent computer. It's just. Yeah, I couldn't save the pr- the pr- the project, and so I'd just do like I'd write it front to back, get it completely done, and then I could do I think I could do the vocals separate. So I did like the entire instrumentation, and then I could come back, put that like wave file in there, and then do the vocals over it. Right on. Yeah. Right on. So what do you think? Uh, <laughs> now let's get into audio production. Screw it, man. Uh, you know, what do you think that you've learned the most throughout these years? Like, when did you first get your hands on, you know, a DAW? It was actually in middle school. I had some type of class. I don't remember the is computer related class, and the teacher taught us FL Studio, like just no the way. very basics. Yeah, it, uh, <laughs> this is in like. Oh man, early two thousands, and so yeah, Was we had like, like a... new metal or something, or like no, no, <laughs> I don't know. Like I, you know how it comes with like weird beats, like we were just yeah. making like maybe he was beats. a fan of uh, rap music or something. I have, I honestly can't. I, I have no idea what kind of music he was in, like <laughs> into. <laughs> he was like kind of nerdy, like we would like build computers and stuff in that class, and. That's cool. He like showed us that. And then I saw the uh, record function. I was like, wait, I could use this to record. Cause at the time I was already playing guitar and in bands and stuff. And then I, yeah. I figured out how to yeah record straight into FL studio. And that's why that's the DAW that I use for, I used to use it for the actual albums. Now I just, that's what I used to demo all the tracks and stuff. Right on, right on. So, uh, what are we at with guitars nowadays? Like, uh, I know you have a telly. I have two tellies now. <laughs> okay. Are um, they uh, Americans? So, for most of Ghost Bath, I had that black telly. It was a Mexican um, with stock pickups. Um, okay. I... I changed like the input to a Les Paul one because the Tele one like goes inside the guitar and it's kind of crappy. Um, yeah. And then I uh, use super thick strings on it. So like 12 to 56, not even slinkies and right. like a bone nut just cut so it can like fit those strings. Um, and that's what I use. I just like the way it sounded. I wasn't worried about, oh, this is only like a $500 guitar or whatever it was. Um, yeah, yeah. And then just recently, like last year, I bought my first new guitar in like six years. And it was a American original 60s Telecaster. Wow. It's got uh, the 57 uh, gray bottom vintage pickups. And it just sounds awesome. I just, I hate like cookie cutter tones and cookie cutter oh, yeah. sounds and so like i just have a specific way i think it's growing up in the midwest we had a lot of sort of post hardcore uh midwest like emo where yeah, like a I lot of the guitar- you had orange amplifiers so yeah that's another that yeah. makes sense yeah and so like with all those bands they would always use that and that really influenced me because you could really hear even if they were like distorted you could hear the notes, you could hear the clarity, and that's kind of where I uh, I tend to go to, where I don't like scoop the mids. I I use a oh, lot God. of mid, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I don't know. I just really like being able to hear all the notes when you play, even if it's like loud and distorted. 
And so right. the Telecaster, it just has that unique sound. And a lot of bands around here use Telecasters and Oranges. So, yeah, I, I got okay. an Orange endorsement, which is right on. a dream come true. But I'm trying to get Fender right now. <laughs> they're they're hard to get a hold of. Oh, yeah. Got Jimi Hendrix on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So I'm going to bring up a debate with you. I always, when I'm talking to guitar players, um, you know, I ask them, you know, you you got a nice amplifier, orange. I know they're fantastic. I have an angle myself. Nice. And do you, so if you plug a $10 guitar into a great amplifier, do you think it'll sound great? Or like people say the humbuckers are, are a big deal, and I don't believe that at all. I think it's 90% the amplifier, 10% the guitar. Do you agree? I 100% agree. Um, yeah, I think the, if you have a, I would rather have a, a good amp and whatever guitar I can make it sound good, or at least how I, I can tweak it to make it sound good. If you have like a crappy amp, you can plug anything in there and it's just, yeah, it's going to sound bad. Yeah. I, yeah, that's how I feel. I, I, people always, I mean, back in the day, I always said like, oh, I, I got to change my pickups to 85s and then I'd plug it into like a fucking, holy shit. Let me think back to what I used to have. Like, uh, it's like a dime two by 12, but it was like a really crappy one. And then I had like a line six. Yeah. <laughs> so there's no the weird, the weird pickups. thing these days I've seen, like, especially in Europe, but I'm seeing it a lot more in the U S now is people don't even use amps anymore. And they just, yeah, just can't they use like a rack into the sound system, which I don't yeah. like, I can see it. It doesn't sound like bad, but it's definitely different. And yeah, I don't I can't see myself doing that. I don't know. Well, I will say I, uh, I've played a, sh- so I have an axe effects myself and I mm-hmm. have an angle, right? Oh, yeah. And the only use I will have for the axe effects is pre-production because I have played one show with an axe effects and it sounded like dog shit. Like there was no, uh, there was no punch to it. Do you know what I mean? Like with a tube amplifier, you feel it on the floor. Ex- exactly. It's like a different, totally different feel. Like if you use those bands that are using racks and like plugging directly in, I mean, it's super clean sounding. It's super like polished. And like, I can see the appeal of it because you don't have to like lug in all these uh, amplifiers and cabinets and stuff. And it's just, it's also like an artistic choice. Like if you want to sound a certain way, you could do it that way. If you want right. to sound like cleaner live and stuff like that. But for me, just growing up with like post hardcore, I was in like noisy bands and stuff. I like the feedback. I like to feel it. Like you said, like the yeah. monitor, the front monitors and from my amp, I just, when I hit my, my notes, I just want to like be blasted yeah, in the it. chest with it. Yeah. You know, I was told on, uh, I was talking to, uh, a member in death angel. And he said to me, um, what he does is he takes the wheels off of the bottom of the cabinet and I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, no shit. Like, that would be so much better. You know, like, you would really fucking feel it then. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, I've never had, I've always had the orange four uh, by 12 and it doesn't have, it doesn't like, have wheels, wheels or anything. So yeah, everything yeah, I've I had like is with wheels. So, okay. Yeah. I don't, I guess I don't know what it'd be like without it, but I can imagine it would, it's, uh, wouldn't it, shake the yeah. floor as much. It's, yeah, definitely no comparison. But, uh, all right. Um, here's a heavy question. Maybe, uh, you know, what has been like one of the greatest achievements with this whole, uh, band ghost band? Oh man. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to pick one. Um, because when I, when I started the band, the idea was just to do it on the side to make music. Cause I was, I went, I was going back to college at the time. I had quit my main project band. It was, uh, that it was like a noisy post hardcore band called I apparatus. And we had just made what I thought was a really good album. And I still think it's good to this day, but it never like took off or, or did anything. So I was like, all right, I guess I got to go back to college. And, um, yeah, I just started this on the side and then it just took off and like every, goal or dream pretty much like 
was checked off the list in the matter of like a couple of years. So right, I'm trying right. to think um, a couple of highlights. I uh, think the craziest thing that yeah. I've seen is the amount of tattoos of <laughs> uh, like uh, for your bet. No, I'm not kidding. Like I, my dream is to have somebody recognize me so much that they fucking ink it on their arm. I feel like that's like the biggest honor. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Fuck, See, fuck it's... all the label shit, all the money, <laughs> fuck all that shit. If you put my name on your arm, I did something right, you know? No, that's true. It is, it's a huge, huge honor. And, like, it's one of those things where when I saw, like, the first one, I was just like, holy shit. Like, I was, like, like speechless. Like, it was crazy to me. Well, what do you And add? then it like, just, like, keep Moon coming Lover, in and coming in. And I was like, you kind of get used to it by now, you know what I mean? I think Moon Lover is at, I, like, just looked on the Instagram page. It was at, like, 25 or 30. Moon lover mm-hmm. tattoos. Yep. yep. Shit. And there's man. a there's a couple starborn. I want to say like three or four, and then there's one person who got our signatures tattooed on them. Yeah. Yeah. It, and there was one of this girl. She did like the full arm of Moon Lover, and I'm yeah. like, no shit. Like <laughs> that is wild. I love. Yeah. It. Yeah, it's crazy to see. I, I do like it a lot. But it, for yeah. me, I don't have any tattoos, so like, oh, okay. it's even crazier to me. <laughs> but yeah, I gotta get some tattoos. Um, all right. The last thing I have really is, uh, you know, what are some of your most cherished items, uh, merch items that you've gotten so far, or up to this point? So merch from like other bands. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, it's, it's, uh, okay. So I collect like non-metal stuff. I, I run a vaporwave record label and I think I just, I just avoid collecting like metal vinyl because it's expensive and I'd probably spend way too much money. (laughs) And then they ship it broken. Yep. Yep. (laughs) So I think it would be. My original, um, it's from the 80s. It's an import from Japan. It's a pop artist called Momoko Kikuchi. Her album, Adventure. I have that on vinyl. I think that's my favorite uh, piece of merch I have. There we go. So if someone stole it, you'd probably pop them in the mouth. (laughs) Maybe, yeah. (laughs) Uh, So I had one last thing. Is uh, Okay. Who do you wish that you could meet in the music industry, dead or alive? Meet in the music industry. Yeah, I mean, so say you're at a show and you just meet them, talk to them, have a beer. <laughs> All right. Um, man, I've met so many people I look up to already just like that, like... Uh, Stefan from Alceste I randomly hung out with in like nice, nice. uh in Transylvania in a fortress at a festival. That I've been fun. trying to I've been trying to get a hold of uh Nietzsche. Yeah. He don't want to do podcasts. I just I just feel it. Like I reach out to him, he's like, ah, I'm busy. Yeah, he's he's pretty busy. I talk to him every once in a while, but he's a busy guy for sure. Um I would probably say Eddie Van Halen, probably. No shit. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. That's the same exact for me. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I uh, I literally have two mock up Eddie Van Halen Frankenstein's next next to me. I. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah, I, I I wore his uh, I wore a Van Halen shirt when I played Hellfest. I love I love Van Halen. <laughs> I uh, yeah. Now I think about it. I watched that live stream and you were like driving around when he passed away. Listen to Van Halen. Oh yeah yeah yeah. That makes on sense. IG, yeah. I, uh, yeah, that's that's how I got a hold of you. I'm like, hey man, be on my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but that's cool. All right, let's let's talk Van Halen. Screw it. Uh, uh, let's think about it. What do you think the uh, best Van Halen album? Yeah, what do you think the best Van Halen album is to this day? Um, or your favorite? So. It's weird because 
for the most part, overall with music, I'm an album guy. But for Van Halen, it's more like songs, which it doesn't make any sense. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, um, it's a and it's a guitar tone thing and like a melody. Th- like I'm really into different melodies. Like you can probably hear it on the Ghost Bath stuff. Like I really like writing little little melody licks within mm-hmm. the the black metal. So um the one i listen to the most is either probably one but just the first album yeah there we go um i thought you were gonna say 1984 and i would be like oh, oh no here we go another but like as far as like songs i really like um dreams which is like a weird pick yeah i think yeah, yeah. i really like uh can't stop loving you i just love the guitar the way the guitar sounds like it's nothing like it's not like his craziest work, but it's just like just the melody and the the way the songs are put together. I just love those. Have you listened to uh, Wolfgang's new music? I have not. Dude, it's like, how do I explain it? Like, well, anyway, he's releasing a new album and the songs that he released, the one was an homage to Eddie Van Halen and uh, his father. And, and then the other song sounded like fucking... Rage Against the Machine, kinda. It's cool. It's okay. like it's like modern age metal. But cool. yeah, I haven't, just, I haven't listened at all to his stuff, dude. You'll fucking cry when you listen to uh, or well, when you watch a music video for the homage. It's it's so sad. Like it really it really shows like how good of a guy Eddie Van Halen was. That's cool. Yeah, I, I definitely should check that out. I didn't even honestly, I didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> It's all right. Nah, I I don't. He's kind of he kind of does his own thing, you know. Like he he doesn't really do a lot of press, and if he does, like it's like with the big ones, and that's it. Like just a few. But yeah, I mean, what are you gonna do if your your dad's Van Halen? You're <laughs> you fucking <know>? Van Halen. <laughs> There's not much press to do. It's already sold off. Yeah. Fuck yeah! All right, so what do we got to? Uh, Look forward to in the future anything to promote and uh yeah, this is your table to uh talk about whatever you want. Uh just got this new album we've been working on for a couple years now due to the pandemic and just not being in a rush because we could we couldn't tour anyway. Um yeah, it's uh darker, heavier the vocals are way better in my opinion, because I don't I still do my like shrieks and and like the emotional high screams, but I mi- it's more of a mix. It's not like the main vocal. Um, gotcha. It's a lot more deathy. Um, so yeah, that's we're trying to put that out. I think end of October it's gonna come out. I just got an email from Nuclear Blast about that. Nice. Pretty sure end of October. So yeah, we're gonna. I don't know if we're gonna tour on it, but. Nah, we're gonna tour. Come on, we got this shit. We got this. Shit. I will. We will. I've been if we see- can. dude. I've been seeing tours like pot. Like I've been seeing announcements a lot recently, and I mean, there there has to be a point where the the industries above our heads are telling these these people that are booking because they they're probably bothering the hell out of them. You know, like what are the guidelines? What are the guidelines? Can we book yeah. a show? Can we get get a tour? So. I feel it slowly coming back, kind of. Yeah. I mean, we got, we just, in the meantime, we're just working on like doing video content for it. We just did band photos, got uh, some drum playthroughs, guitar playthroughs. We're going to do like a full band playthrough in the studio, Uh, maybe a music video, some visualizers got some teaser videos <laughs> we just right been on. like oh what should we do just keep ourselves busy make some yeah. content we Nuclear. have like a making of documentary we made for oh this shit one. yo yeah. that's my favorite that is i know like... i love those so much and the thing is like Ner- so nervosa did one of those and they had like a full-on it was like four parts but it was legit like an hour long altogether and it was so good like it was just packed with uh things that people don't see you know like the actual personality behind the musician itself that's what i find the most interesting well half of the puzzle you know yeah 
Yeah, this one I I haven't seen. So it's like all filmed, but it hasn't. I haven't seen like any cuts of it. So I'm I don't even know how it's how it's going to turn out. So as long as it's done, <laughs> and uh, it's, it, as long as it's uh, released and out of your hair, fuck it. Yeah, uh, I think that'll that'll come out like after the album, probably. So I don't know. It's right a, on. we were going for like a little bit shorter. It's not going to be like an hour long or anything. Maybe twenty minutes or something. Hey, that's good enough, man. Yeah. I'll take that over nothing, any day. But yeah, it was just uh, yeah, just us in the studio. We did some like talking to the camera. He filmed like us just bantering and shit. So I, <laughs> I have no idea how it's gonna how it's gonna look.